Hello everyone, in this tutorial we're going to talk about using partial conform to fix visual defects on your character's meshes. This often occurs if you're changing the morph shape of your character and the clothing has to conform along with it. Sometimes you don't you want certain elements of your character's cloth mesh to remain consistent and not morph along with the clothing as, as they may be made of solid objects like diamonds or jewels, which we'll see in this example here. Okay, so we have this uh, character on the screen right now, and there's a couple of things on her that we want to remain very solid. Uh, one which is the like, kind of metal parts here, or the stone slash iron parts here, whatever they are, on her on her chest, and the jewels and the buttons on her corset here. Right? Okay, so let's first take a look at what happens if we wanted to maybe uh, add a bit more weight to this character's midsection. So let's go over here to our morphs here, and I'm just going to go to the uh, body section here. I just type in heavy in the uh, search field and it'll come up with this uh, heavy uh, slider here. And if I make my character a little bit fatter, like maybe up to about a little of 30, 35-ish or something like that, you'll see that uh, if we take a look and zoom in on these uh, buttons here on our character, that you know they'll get kind of distorted, especially these ones on the bottom here. You can see they're kind of just stretching out like that. And obviously this is not something that we want. Okay, so what I'm going to show you here is how you can, uh, you know, basically assign certain parts of your mesh to be non-conforming so they will actually uh, not conform along with the cloth uh, and stretch and stuff like that. Okay, so first of all, let's take our character back to the uh, uh, zero value on the heavy. Okay, you want to make sure that you reset your character to the uh, to the default uh, morph before you uh, do any of this stuff. Okay, just keep that in mind. So let's first take a look at uh, adjusting these buttons here. So to do that, I'm going to go over here to our attributes tab and make sure that we have the object selected. Okay, so in this case, it's the uh, armor uh, dot shape here, whatever it is, okay? That is this item, item that we have selected right here, the midsection, uh, corset, whatever you wanna call it. Okay, and let's take a look at assigning each one of these buttons uh, to a non-conforming status. So let's go ahead and select conform here under the modify section. And what we're gonna do is now we're gonna go into edit range, okay? So when you select edit range, there's a number of different ways you can uh, you can select, you know, the range that you want to uh, um, assign as non-conforming. Okay, now with a ver with vertex selected, I mean, it's fairly simple. Uh, you can just, you know, click on each individual uh, vertex here and, and uh, it'll be selected in red. If you want to add more, you can uh, hold control and click on additional vertexes. Okay, if you want to uh, remove any of the vertexes that you already have selected, uh, again, hold control, you can click and drag and just deselect all these ones for example. Okay, we can reselect them by holding control and selecting them again. Okay, and if you want to add to your selection, uh, you can just hold the shift key and click and drag. You'll see the cursor will have a plus symbol on it. And basically it doesn't really matter what you've uh, selected already. It'll just add on more of the uh, selection area. Okay, so let's go ahead and just select this uh, one, one or two here. I'm gonna control and select a couple of them. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we have the ignore back face. So, um, with this selected, we're not going to be selecting the back of our character's uh, torso there as well. If we take that off and we uh, select, you know, an area like this, it's also going to select that same area on the back of the torso there as well. Okay, so generally you don't want to do this um, unless uh, you know, in certain situations you may want to, but generally you don't want to. Okay, so we're going to select ignore back face. Okay, and there's a couple other tools here. Uh, you can uh, grow your selection. So if I have a couple of uh, vertexes selected here, I can just uh, grow grow the selection. You can see it'll grow the selection like that. And I can reduce the uh, strength of selection. Okay, just like this. Fairly simple. You can also invert the selection. So if I click this, it'll select everything except what I previously had selected. And I can invert it one more time. And you can also select all. Okay, select all just like this. Or you can deselect all. Right, select none. All right, and finally there's also another section here down uh, below that called mirror tolerance. All right. And if you want to uh, maybe, for example, select this uh, area right here, maybe we'll just grow that a little bit like this. And I want to mirror that uh, exact selection to the other side of the mesh. Well, generally, we want to, you want to keep a fairly low mirror tolerance. I'd even recommend maybe like something like 0 0.01, okay? Just so it's a more accurate mirror. And then you can go ahead and click this button and mirror selected, all right? So it'll mirror the exact uh, same vertices or vertex points on the other side, okay? Um, there's also uh, selecting by element, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. So let's talk about brush first here as well. So if I select brush, okay, we can just, you know, uh, our brush radius, we can increase or decrease that. You can also hold the B hotkey and click and drag your mouse button 
uh, right mouse button here. So B and click and drag the right mouse button to increase or decrease your brush radius. Just a little uh, hot key there for you. And so you can just, you know, brush all these vertices and whichever ones you want to select just like this. Okay. And uh, just like that, fairly simple stuff. All right, not really much to talk about there. But let's talk about selecting by element. And this is where we're going to select our individual buttons here. Okay, so I'm gonna just go ahead and select a couple of uh, four buttons here first. So I'm gonna click this one and hold control and click this one. And I'm also gonna click these two right here. Now, when you're selecting these items, uh, it's very important to notice that there is another uh, parameter down here called rigid in one group. Now, if you select rigid in one group, basically what's going to happen is it's going to kind of try and find a middle point between all of these uh, elements you've selected and uh, move them together as, as, a, as, as a group, okay? Um, set them as rigid in a group. However, if you uh, deselect this, what's going to happen is it's going to uh, basically take them, make them individual, okay? So it'll calculate them individually, which is generally what I recommend in a case like this. You probably want to deselect uh, rigid in one group, okay? If I uh, select it right now and I just select non-conform, this is going to assign these four buttons here as non-conform. Right, so if I click non-conform, those are going to kind of go uh, dark red there, and you'll see that these will not conform along with the other buttons. So let's test this out really quick first, okay? Let's go over to uh, the uh, morph sliders here again, and let's uh, zoom a tiny little bit so the stomach doesn't get in our <laughs> directly into our camera there. And let's click and drag the heavy slider there. Okay, so you'll notice that the ones that we uh, did not conform, these two right here and these two right here, they're doing fairly well, okay? We may need to push this one out a little bit um, uh, manually, but uh, you can see these ones are really uh, morphed and, and uh, messed up, as well as these ones here on the top, okay? So let's go ahead and take that back down. Uh, again, you need to reset it back down to the uh, default value before you do any more conforming, or partial conforming, and go to attributes, okay? And so let's do that one more time. Let's go to conform, and edit range. Or sorry, we're gonna just uh, select the elements here, edit range and element okay and let's have them all joined together so uh we're going to click on all of these items right here so just like this make sure they're all selected all of the buttons and then we're going to go here to deselect rigid in one group okay so they'll all conform together and select non-conform all right that'll assign them all as non-conforming elements Let's go back to our uh, morphs here and give this a test. All right, so let's take a bit of a side view there and click and drag that heavy slider. You can see now there's no distortion on those buttons and they're actually remaining the same shape as they initially were. Okay, and you'll notice that this one down here, because it's not uh, combined with the other ones, the string is no longer going through it. It's individual now, so it's not um, as a group, okay? So this is kind of the ideal situation that you want. You, have, you know, you can stretch out your stomach even further and have those uh, buttons remain uh, relatively in their original shape, okay? So this is kind of the ideal situation that you want. All right, let's take our character uh, heavy level back down to zero, and let's add a couple more uh, elements to that whole situation, to that whole uh, morph, okay? So you can see here, it's actually stretching out this uh, diamond on the front or emerald, whatever it is, and it'll kind of stretch out the, the back as well. So what we want to do is we want to, and also this uh, this metallic part here on our character, if we take it up to even further, you'll see that uh, we want to maintain this uh, metallic elements uh, to have their original shape, okay? So let's go back to the uh, attributes tab and one more time into conform, and we're going to edit range and just select those various elements, okay? So when we have elements selected, you can see these ones are non-conformed. We're going to add a couple more things onto there. We're going to add these uh, jewels here on the side of our character. So I'm just going to select that one and control and select this one here. All right? I believe there's one more on the back. Oh, it's part of a different uh, different mesh. Okay, but we're also going to select the uh, chest section here. Okay, so control and add all of these uh, points here as well. Okay, make sure that we have all these points added in. Control, click on those screws. Anything that's metal, generally you don't want to have to conform um, like it's a cloth, okay? So we'll just uh, have all these selected. 
and we'll do the same thing. Make sure that rigid in one group is deselected, for sure in this case, and non-conform. Okay, so that's going to assign those as non-conforming elements. And then we'll select this uh, section here. All right, we're going to select this loincloth uh, section here. And go back to the elements, or select the loincloth mesh rather. Okay, just make sure we select all these elements, again holding control. And there's one more on the back. And we're also going to set those to non-conform. Right? Good enough. Okay, now one problem that may occur when you've set uh, elements of your character to non-conform, like this uh, chest armor here, for example, if I increase the heavy slider one more time here to a value of like uh, 33, you'll see that the uh, the chest armor will kind of st start to break into the character's uh, skin mesh there and the, the mesh of the corset, which is what we don't want. Okay, so that's one unfortunate uh, side effect of uh, setting that to non-conform. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and try and fix this. And to do that, we're going to use the Edit Mesh tool. So I'm going to go to Attributes here, and we're going to choose Edit Mesh. And you can select, you know, um, just use this Select Non-Conformed Vertices right here, and it'll select all the non-conformed vertices on your character. And if you want to, uh, you know, deselect them, you can deselect them or reselect them. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and use Soft Selection here, and I'm going to select an area like this, okay? And we can increase the radius of our Soft Selection just like this. And I want to bring this uh, part of our character's uh, body armor, chest armor, whatever, out a little bit here, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do that just like this. Okay, so I'm going to edit the mesh manually. And you can select the area further in like this and bring that out further as well. Okay, just like this. And uh, down here, you can bring that out a little further as well, just like this. Make sure that you have the area selected that you want to bring out, obviously, okay? And then you should get a decent result like this. Okay, and this part here probably needs to be brought out even further as well. Let's really bring that part out here, or bring this part down probably. Okay, just like that. And I think we are good. We can just do the same thing on the other side if we want, just like this. Soft selection, just bring it out like this. And select further in, and you know, slowly just bring it out one piece by one piece there. And uh, should be good to go at some point. There we go. All right. Good enough for me. And that's how you can resolve that issue easily using the Edit Mesh tool. All right, so then we can just go out of Edit Mesh and you can see the final conformed shape on our character's uh, chest armor there. Looking pretty good. All right, so that's really about all I wanted to show you in this tutorial, guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I uh, hopefully you learned a lot. Uh, make sure you check out our other tutorials on our YouTube channel and our forums over at forum.reillusion.com. And I'll see you in the next video.